Well, my ship reviews, I rate the ship in different sections, which is exterior, interior, functionality, cockpit, lighting, and sound. Let's start with the exterior. Now, I don't like the asymmetrical wing setup, and I think they tried to replicate one of the Star Wars ships. And I think Clyde Imperium Games is doing it all the time. They're trying to get as close as possible to existing pop culture trends, to copy them, without getting sued by by the owner company. And I think that's what he tells his art directors too, like get as close as you can without us getting sued for it. However, I think the, the wing, it, it doesn't annoy me too much. It, it fits into the um, it fits into the structure of the ship. So it, it's not too much of, of, of an irritation for me. Now the rest of the proportion of the ship, it's a bit, it still looks like those older ships that, like the um, phenomenally ugly constellation. The thing is so ugly it shouldn't be in the game because it literally was. It looks like it was made out of, um, of out of somebody in a modeling program with little training, extruding a box in a certain direction, tapering the edges a bit, and then calling it a ship. And, and the shape of the ship echoes that a bit, the way it, it tapers in this way. But it, it's uh, it's not as bad. And I think. Like a ship of that size, it should have a cockpit somewhere up here in the ship. It shouldn't have a nose cockpit if it's this long. From the out outside shape, I think it's... Um, let's get a bit closer for examining it. Now what I do like is that it looks a bit um, encased in this outer plating. Like the cockpit is protruding from it. That, that looks nice. Like, like it's here, like a shell from the outside. Now the struts look a bit cheap. They're not as beautiful as the reclaimer struts. Then the cockpit in the, the second, uh, the co-pilot or whatever, gunner cockpit, looks a bit too massive. Because uh, it should be much more compact. Because technically it's just a... Well, technically it would be a ball turret, like in a World War II bomber plane. But it shouldn't be any bigger than what this over here is. Like the gun could be bigger than on the other one, but it's just the cockpit. It looks too roomy for... <clears throat> I think there's too much busy detail on the engines. Like this should have just some some plating, smooth plating, and underneath some exposed engine parts. But it's it looks a bit too busy just for the sake of looking busy. As for the texture quality, I think that's a general problem with this with this game. And I recorded a video for the Drake Cutter half an hour before I recorded this video, so I talked about it a lot. Is that um this game is a serious weakness with metal textures. Because most metal textures in this game either look like greasy aluminum or they look like styrofoam, where you can't tell if it's plastic or something else. Only the Argo Raft about last year was able to rise above that in terms of making materials look the way they should look. I think this part over here is a bit too busy. Too much geometry. The whole thing could be just a nice smooth plate like on some Argo ships. I think those wings look too thick to actually. Yeah, they, they look proportionally they look too thick to. Um, they should, I think, be half the, the thickness that they are. In terms of exterior, oh, there's a nice docking car. That's nice, but it's more functional, I think. And I'm going to score it at the end of the um, video, so it doesn't take too long in between. You know, before I go to the interior, I'd like to point out some really nice functionality things. As you can see, that you have a docking car. That's nice. And there's a really nice uh, device below the ramp you can use. Oh, wait a minute. Um, that's the controls for the ramp. First thing I want to show you is this over here. I, no I noticed it's really nice how it's compact and almost hidden away. I actually have to look for it. It doesn't look like some huge thing. Look at me with a huge arrow pointing at it for you to actually click on it. Yes. Open. Goes down. And I think that's some refueling nozzle that comes out. Oh, actually has some really nice small detail. Look at those nice little screws. That's actually looks surprisingly good for uh, compared to the rest of the ship in terms of the texture quality. I have a theory that maybe some ships have like these refueling nozzles that you have to actually dock to them, and another one for for ground uh, refueling or something. Because on the cutter, there's two different uh, fuel nozzles like that. I'm assuming they're fuel nozzles. I have no idea what they really are. Okay, so. 
And a bit too much busy detail. Now the engines. That looks nice. Good detail, but then the, the texture quality is what drags it on. Okay, now let's open the ship up. I think there are buttons for opening on both sides of the ship. So we can go to the interior. I gotta say, those lamps look really nice. I noticed that in the cutter too earlier. I re re it, when I, <clears throat> sorry, when I reviewed it earlier. Some nice detail. The way the glass looks. Open it. I think the hatch opens too fast. Such a massive hatch should open a bit slow. Now those blinking positional lights are irritating. I hope you can turn them off in the ship. Look at from the outside. I think it's... See, here's my problem. It looks like the interior was just carved into it, and then some superficial, superficial detail added on top of it. Like if you compare it to the Avenger or the Cutter or some other ships, then notice the interior on those ships, it follows closely the exterior hull. And there's some support struts in it, or st support structure, I shouldn't say struts. And that's the same problem with the, with the Cutlass, where basically just the interior is just a sm um, cleanly carved box and then some detail to break up the um, the, uh, the smoothness of it. Yeah, they should have... The interior basically should echo the outside a bit more. Well, what I do like is this over here looks nice. What I do not like is that plastic in behind is just a splat texture slapped on it. What it should do is like have it sag through the thing exactly where it protrudes. Uh, what I can notice here over here, the lighting, notice the fog is already really bad in here. I'm going to show you from the outside. Um, one more thing. Okay, I'm not sure if it's visible. It was visible earlier before. Can you see the fog on the inside already from the outside? It's hard to see probably, but... Um, it was visible in the lower cockpit a bit more. Okay, let's go back inside. <clears throat> it's a bit too much noisy detail just for the sake of having noisy detail. Notice here that plastic stuff protruding out makes no sense like this. And they copy pasted those four things just... What was that over here? That's just some... I think it's called Greeble in game development. Where you have like this, this um, techie stuff that has no real purpose, it just looks like it has purpose. And I think they overdid it over here. It's just too much busy detail. Notice they got lazy with the, with the modeling over here. And I pointed it out with a cutter, cutter, almost a cutlass. Down. Basically, I notice here they just extruded boxes. Everything is the same thickness over here. And then they just slapped the procedural material on it, so they're going to have to precisely paint over the texture so it looks nice. There is too much busy detail just for the sake of it. That's not good. Okay, let's go inside. Okay, might have to take a mat stick. Why am I freezing over? I'm in space. It shouldn't be moist outside. Oh, it's a Quartico pin. Ah, there's my hammer time. Okay. Okay, here we go. As you can see here, the fog lighting is extremely washed out. And it's already foggy. You see that? that like for some reason, they had fog in some ships to make it look cool. And it's, I think it's a really cheap way to try it, and it, it usually doesn't work. It doesn't look better with it. Next problem with all Drake ships color scheme. You have this puke green. It's terrible. You have these yellow warning things. They make sense if you use them sparingly in certain areas. Or they use it all over the place. Again, puke green. Warning yellow and some gray black. And if you look at the floor in the star lift on the upper decks, on the lower decks, it, it's pure beauty with carefully chosen colors that balance each other. Like these, these beige plastics and some pink in it. But Drake ships, for some reason, they overdo that whole. It's evil, it's it's in your face, and it's... Well, it looks like a construction site that wants to impale you on something all the time. Like a caricature of a pirate ship. Okay, so it's nice and spacious. I do like the um, 
that you have a staircase leading up. But again, the modeling is extremely primitive. Like they tried too hard to bolt it onto the ship. Now what's interesting here, they added welding seams. That's a really nice attempt. The problem is they don't look realistic enough. Like in War Thunder, they look perfect. But it's a good attempt. Maybe they're going to improve it. So, again, really washed out bad texturing. Like It looks like some weird ceramic with some weird dirt on it. It doesn't look like metal. And it's really weird because ships released over a year ago, or one and a half years ago, have better texturing quality in lettering up. Like, especially the raft or the star lifter. And the lighting is too washed out. That's the, the on lighting, by the way. It's not the turn off lighting. Because I turn on the lights before I start the review. The door has extremely low polygons. Check it out. The functionality is really nice. You have some buttons you can open close. Notice here the extremely low polys and, and ugly texturing. Like that shouldn't happen in, a, in such a anticipated chip like the Corsair. You shouldn't have texturing that's this bad. Like like come on, that's just terrible. It's like the ugliest door in a ship I've seen so far in this game. And it's tragic because the Starlifter and the MSR had much more beautiful door designs. Not just designs, like structurally, the, the way the model works and the quality of the textures, way better over a year ago. So I think they have different teams working on different ships, and this particular ship team needs to improve their texturing and lighting and use less fog. Okay, open. What I do like is here, if it doesn't have a button for the thing, you see like some stuff ex exposed behind it. I think that's a nice, really nice touch. However, notice again the yellow warning thing over everything. Because it makes you feel outwell come in the ship if everything is yellow and black. It's, it, it's, it's, it just doesn't work the colors. Not sure what the structure of this room is for. I guess there is some, uh, okay, life support, some thing. But if it's only that small thing, why is there a huge column in the room? Like that. Now, I like the idea that it's exposed cables going into something, but uh, it appears it uses up too much room just for the sake of using up room. Because if the components are this small, why in the center of the room like that and the column like this? And notice the pulsating light. It's irritating. Again, too much fog. Not good. So we have here hydrogen fuel tanks. Let's I think the docking clamp room. Let's open this one. Can you see the fog? See that? It's everywhere. It's way too much. And the lighting is washed out at the same time. Okay, this uh, appears to be gun rack, clothing rack. And again, that airlock looks like it's made out of ceramic or out of stone. Even the screws have the same color as the thing. I think that's just lazy texturing. And if you compare it to the Argo Raft airlock, the Argo Raft airlock looks much, much better. It has like this really nice uh, laminated painted metal look and everything. If you open it, first the animation is a bit too wobbly. Notice how it bolts back and forth. If it's a heavy airlock door like that, it wouldn't wobble back and forth when you do that. Mm, okay, next room. Nothing on this side. It is the crew uh, compartment. Now, structurally, here's a problem with, with Drake ships. They have the submarine lower decks of an aircraft carrier compactness. I'm not saying it's claustrophobic, because it's actually not, because if, if you go external view, this is a gigantic room. It's just the field of view is tricking you. Okay, so let's take a look. That is actually a gigantic room if you measure it. That's seven, eight meters in, in, in that direction at least. It's just the FOV in this game, and I play with really low FOV, by the way. Everything looks smaller than it actually is. Then the problem is, the idea that they want to make it dark and claustrophobic and like in a submarine, that's not a bad idea. The problem is the texture and quality sucks. And notice the, the structure doesn't really echo the submarine type. Only at the door you see it a bit. Looks like the rooms were carved out cleanly as blocks and then some detail was added to obscure it that it's just a primitive color. And the lighting's too washed out. That's not a comfortable place to be in. And some people say, okay, it's a Drake ship, you're supposed to be an evil pirate feeling evil all the time. I think not. I mean, if you look, um, the way cargo ship or old railing rig interiors look like, they're actually really clean and comfortable because the crew wants to have a nice place to live in. 
So they're always doing this whole Drake runaway um, design language thing. It's too dark. It's and the thing is, why is there no huge window to the outside over here? You know, let's see, these are crew compartments. Notice the lighting is actually not washed out. There's a nice defined lighting source. But notice how uncomfortable this place looks. Everything's yellow, green, gray. Compared to the Starlifter or the Raft. Really bad chrome texture. What is that? Greasy aluminum again. You have a suit locker. The functionality, it's really nice. You have, you have three rooms or four rooms, I think, for the crew. Room light on off. Hmm, doesn't appear to work. Maybe you have to click two times, I'm not sure. And now I notice it looks more washed out because it looks like the, the light source comes from an undefined source. Doesn't make any sense. It's just. It, it's too washed out over here. Now I think those rooms are the same. The layout is slightly different. But it's not that the room is crammed that's a problem. It's just imagine taking the color schemes from an Argo Raft interior, those beautiful beiges and browns and some orange ends. Imagine how much better the ship would look. Maybe some little windows to the outside. Because they have good ideas for Drake ships structurally, but it's the texturing and this obsessive holding on to um, really old design practices for the ship that keep it back, I think. Now here's the next room. Okay, not much different here. Yeah. Guess it's a shower room. And it just looks like a depressing, evil place. That again, flat texture. Notice they could have modeled some nice cushions coming through and sagging through it, like on the Argo Ruff, for example, or the Argo Mold, even. But they didn't do it. So that's a really like doing everything wrong with the color they can do in the ship. Okay, let's see. I think that's a component hatch. Oh wait, that's actually uh, elevator. <laughs> I forgot there's an elevator in the ship. Now the elevator is amazing in the ship. That's like one of the big, big highlights in the ship. And it makes me especially excited. Why is it closing? Open up. Now I kept writing posts about how the game should have more flight simulator stuff in it. And I'm not sure the, I'm sure I'm not the only person doing it, but anyway, I, I kept writing about it like for three years. And I think they did it, and they did the, incorporate some flight sim stuff into the into the ships. And they even did it in places that I wouldn't have expected it. Which is, for example, the elevator controls here. That looks like a control quadrant of a World War II uh, fighter plane, especially an American one. But they have these really cool levers. Nice, easy to read, um, what do you call it, um, labels? Mess hall, surface roof. Roof. This is really nice tactile experience. You, you push the lever down, it pushes you up. Notice how nice the lighting it is on the outside. Notice pure white lighting, normal shadowing. Let's go back inside. That's how washed out the lighting is. But yeah, that's an amazing thing that they added. That's it's functionality-wise, it, it it's a fantastic thing they added this. Just the tactile feeling of interacting with a button or lever. You push it, and something happens. Machinery. It's it's wonderful. Which really, um, I think, makes the review a bit more fun for me because it was up to this point it was quite depressing. I would say. Okay, let's go. What section of the ship? No, we got two turrets. I'm going to just check one of them because I think they're the same. Okay, like this pipe. Surprisingly high quality for a pipe in the ship. I like how it actually goes out a bit. Like it looks exposed, but it doesn't look too improvised. Like um, like some other things I'm going to show in a moment. Again, lighting too washed out. Let's get into the turret. I 
the whole apparatus of actually getting into the turret is a bit weird. Why didn't they just make it like a walk you to the entrance of the turret instead of getting pushed in like that? Do I turn that thing off? I'm not like an experienced turret player. I like it actually has some inertia to it. Like if you quickly change directions, there's some inertia. That's really good, I think. It's important to make you feel the masses of the things you're interacting with. The lighting, why is, it so, why is it so dark? You can change sensitivity, switch gyro mode, switch fire mode. Yeah, but there should be like some lighting. It shouldn't be this dark in the ship. It's one of those places where actually should have some, some dashboard lighting. Go back outside. Notice how the fog starts as soon as you get in. Way too much fog in here. Super bright lamp. Okay, now this is the cockpit area. Well, this is, looks a bit too much like the catapult. Now, the, here's the tragedy with um, with those Drake ships. They have really good structural ideas. Like this looks like some some submarine. These submarines already have cockpits, but like structurally. And it reminds me of some old sci-fi movies, the way this, this, um, you walk back on this place. I think it might be, I'm not sure if you've seen it in the movie, or it's just some, you know, anyway, so. <clears throat> they have structurally great ideas, but it's texture and quality that drags it down, and again, the stupid puke green, yellow, and gray. They should get the Argo Raft people to do the lighting and the coloring onto this project. I think it would improve a lot. Or the guys who are doing that should take some hints from what they are doing. Like, I don't want to get people to replace, but I'm only, as a customer, I'm seeing the end product here. I'm just, <clears throat> I'm just rating the product as I see it. I'm not sure what that is. Okay, what's that? The captain's room. Oh yeah, that's the captain's room. Now, it looks the same as the other ones. A bit less washed out. That effect should look better, a lot better. Notice how, uh, when the daylight comes in, or sunlight rather, Notice the pure white light, how beautiful it looks. Okay, let's see what do we have here. Some component hatches. Looks like a convoluted mechanism. And that seems like a really stupid mechanism. Like, like what the hell? Come on. Like the door is slid down, then the entire structure lets it go and slides it down. Then you have to take place in there. Like, and it, that's a really good mechanism. Also, the texturing really bad here. Huh. In the cockpit, I'm not sure what. To, oh wait, that's a co-pilot thing. Let's go to the co-pilot uh, thing first. I think it's a bit of a gimmick that you get pulled down like that and into extra cockpit. Now, what is a highlight is actually a really nice cockpit. Again, I think the whole flight sim feedback what players, some players give them, me being one among them, among them <clears throat> probably caused some inspiration in that direction. So I really like this one. Also, incidentally, it looks a lot better in terms of quality than the cutter cockpit. The cutter cockpit has the same ideas, but the texture is much, much worse than this one. So I'm not sure what happened over there. Looks like a compass. I hope it's going. I hope it's going to be animated at some point. Headlights, but the thing is, uh, is it just a copy from the top cockpit? I'm not sure because if there is no headlights button for the lower, if they just copied over the whole dashboard, that would be lame. And why is there a doors lock? Either because the copilot should also control them, or because they just copy pasted it. If they copy pasted the whole thing, that would be, I think, disappointing. Uh, <clears throat> I hope those kind of things will be functional eventually. That would be super amazing, so you can like dim the display and all that. I'm not sure why that thing is built in vertically with labeling like that. Now, some might say, oh, it's Drake, they're being improvised, but no, I think I think just the artist who made it ran away with the whole Drake thing too much. Okay. Oh, lazy animation mark over here. Now, I like this part. Uh, wait a minute, why does he have a throttle level if he's the co-pilot? Now, I'm not sure if the co-pilot can fly the ship too. I have no idea if that actually works, so it should work. Let me see. Now the engine. 
because a Ghana doesn't need a lever like that, I think. What I do like is that weapon uh, selection panel being an extra box up here. That looks really beautiful. Okay, let's go to the top area. I think that's going to be the highlight of the ship, the cockpit. Again, like the other one. Probably differently arranged panels. You see, that's the same panel. I guess it was a copy page. See here. That thing shouldn't exist in a lower cockpit because if there's no throttle for the pilot, uh, co-pilot, or I think it's a gunner uh, to use. I think they got a bit lazy with the cockpit. Notice here that the MFD has the same thickness as the the cover against the glare. And that's animation laziness because. Um, no, uh, modeling laziness, because I think the artist did that, so he has less work UV mapping it. Because on a on a on a plain cockpit, the the glass shield is usually much much thinner and a different material. However, a really good highlight is that CRT um, curved uh, monitor screen. That looks really nice. Let's check the cockpit experience. Okay, as I said, in the lower cockpit. Don't want to repeat too much so the video doesn't get too long. That's a really good flight sim cockpit. I think they should like um, get the proportions of the buttons a bit lower. I'd use a different font that doesn't look like a sci-fi font. Just lose some open sounds or Arial or whatever. And one thing I really liked in this cockpit when I started the ship earlier, I didn't know where the hotkey was for folding the wings. Okay. And the cool thing is if you have a DCS like flights and cockpit like that, you don't have to go to your options and check for the keybind. You actually look around in the cockpit until you find it. And it's like here. Oh, wings extend retract. So you click it, goes down, and your wings extract. That's the beauty of flight sim games like DCS. You can look around the cockpit for what you want and find it. So that, that's a really uh, great functionality thing. Landing sensor, interesting. Landing gear. Wings, headlights, doesn't work yet. I think that's the um, compass thingy. Okay, it doesn't move as I move my ship. Then I'm going to do an audio test of the ship. Use my volume. Put my headphones a bit far. I'm going to review the quality of the audio in the ship. Now here's a big problem with the ship. Notice that the engines are on in my shipper. And they probably have been for the whole video. And I probably, in, in post-processing, I'm going to edit it out until I get to this point in the video because it's extremely annoying. Notice here, the engines are on. You hear that, that, that pulsating sound? And it's there all the time. If you turn off the engines, now it turns off. If you turn it sound on, it's almost as annoying as this one. Yeah, that, that, that pulsating. Vuh, vuh, vuh. See, that should be edited out because that's so annoying, it makes actually flying the ship really annoying. Even if you're just in the ship and the engine is on. That's an extremely highly irritating sound. Now let's go for the pitch sounds. I think it's a bit too has too much character. It should just sound like like thrusters firing filter through the hall from the outside. That that's too much character. Too much droning. Because ships shouldn't have unique character sounds for the way the pitch and the roll and everything sounds. They should just sound realistic and it's going to sound great. That sounds like some some robot dog growling. Not good. Oh I also want to man mention I like that little ventilator. However, they should have different speed settings and a button like a DCS. If you click on it, it actually stops. And a button to actually turn it off completely. But it's a nice detail. I think it shows that some of those developers they actually play DCS with uh, the Mi-24 helicopter. Because <laughs> it's a common thing in Russian uh, helicopters. They have this um, ventilator thingy. Okay. 
Now, I really do not like that MFD Underground. It's functional, but it's that stupid runaway Drake joke that everything's improvised. And I don't want every ship that's coming out of factory coming pre-placed with the MFD Underground. It's just a stupid gimmick. Okay, it, it doesn't make sense. Let's, let's test the engine sounds. Now, the raw of the... The idle raw of the acceleration sounds great, but what's extremely annoying is that ignition sound when you press W. That that's really annoying on most ships, but on this one it's especially annoying. You get that really sharp in your ear thing. Too much metallic drone. I think it would be better if it would be like on the cutter or on the raft. The cutter I think has the best sound for, for engine movement so far. Notice here where I'm, I'm slowing down. Hear that? That, that, um, that high character ignition sound. That's extremely annoying. Every time it just confirms that you're pressing a key, and it's super annoying. Too much metallic drone. Off the engine again. Now I'm going to check some of the component sounds of, of when you're opening stuff. Because on the um, cutter I reviewed earlier, those were amazing sounds. Can I open something here? I think not. I'm actually not sure if you have component hatches like on the cutter that you can open. I think those are much bigger. And yeah. That washing machine or the droning sound again. Like there's too much ambient, too prominent ambient audio. Yeah. that? It's way too much. That's the problem with many ships, they have too much character, like they have a signature character's hero sound in, in each room. And it's too prominent, it should be some background humming that you barely notice. Again, super wide noise. Now, this room is not so bad. There's it it too much higher, higher, how much, too much varying um, something like that. So, yeah, I think that should conclude the gathering of the data. Jeez, that thing is loud. Okay, now I'm going to. Let's go for the rating of the ship. Okay. Okay, because uh, let's go with exterior first. How good is the exterior? There's too much busy detail. The oval structure, I don't like the, the asymmetric wing, but it, it, it's not that bad. I gave the raft an 8 out of 10. The cutter got an 8 out of 10, so it can't be that good. Mm, I think there's too much busy detail. And I think the lower cockpit is too prominent in the ship, so I'll give it a 5 out of 10. Actually, I don't like it that much. Nah, I'll give it a four. Four out of ten. Okay, now the interior. That's the interior quality, not the functionality, just the way it looks. And there's some serious quality issues with the textures. There's too much fog. And really bad color choices. Green, puke green, dark black, and uh, gray and um, yellow or whatever. So it's a really uncomfortable place. You don't want to be in this place. So the interior quality is <clears throat> paying to all the ships I did. I'm checking some other reviews. Hmm. Yeah, I think the texturing is consistently bad in the ship. The doors are extremely ugly in terms of, of quality. So yeah, the interior, three out of ten. 
Let's go for functionality. But then a lot of functionality wise, there's some really good highlights, like some extremely nicely made highlights. For example, we have this, uh, this World War II plane lever system that, that's uh, amazing. Then you have the fuel nozzle at the back you can open. You have a lot of options on, on the door panels. I would also like the, the cockpit stuff, but it's a separate rating for cockpit. So in terms of functionality, mm, functionality, I would say it's uh, functionality. <clears throat> Yeah, give it a 5 out of 10. Now the cockpit. Now the cockpit is amazing because it went for the whole flight sim. And for some odd reason it actually looks very similar to the cutter. However, the Corsair has much better quality in the cockpit, in the labels, the font, the texturing, all that. It's slightly better than the than the cutter. And the cutter I gave them... Hmm. Oh, the MFT that's lying on the ground sort of ruins it. I'll give it cockpit wise as an 8 out of 10. Now, lighting is really bad in this ship. It's, it's washed out everywhere. And there's too much fog mixing into it. Yeah, lighting is, is not good in this one. Uh, lighting, I give it a. 3 out of 10. It's actually quite bad. Let's go for sound. In terms of sound, it has some highly irritating engine sounds. Like the idle sound when the engine is on without actually moving. And the rooms have too much character in them, and there's not much other sounds you can go with. Just the, the pitch and the roll sounds, they have too much electronic... Um, they sound like an electronic dog growling sometimes. So the audio is not good in this ship. And the accelerating sound, it really, this loud hiss, it, it's... Like it's considerably worse than the cutter. And the cutter is really good audio. And the cutter, the cutter I gave like 9 out of 10. And I think I have a suspicion that the cutter is made by a different team than the Corsair team. Like, there's some f differences in the audio that are just uh, really... Really high. The sound is. Uh, hmm. I mean, it's bad, but how bad is it compared to other ships? Oh, I think. Hmm, can't decide. Somewhere between two and a four, I would give it. Yeah, the audio is, is really bad. It's not like that the, the normal sounds are not bad. It's just that the certain sounds are too noisy and they get too much in your face when you're playing. Can't really decide on this one. Uh, yeah, I'll give it a 2 out of 10. Okay, let's get the average. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> Well, total score is a 4.16, which is a 4.2 if you round it up. I think it's a bit of problematic with this ship. If they get the audio to be more realistic, like, like in the cutter, just make it sound realistic. Smooth, fiery sounds that are filtered through the hull. Deep, deep, low frequency rolls. And then the other thing is the structure. The idea of the ship is actually quite good. Like you have this, this submarine lower deck thing going on, but... The execution of the system is just bad. Bad color choices, bad texturing quality, bad color selections, washed out lighting, fog. Yeah, that's the review. I hope you liked it and let me know in the comments what you think.